Hello and welcome uh, to my AEW review. A lot of things going on in the show tonight, uh, especially the empty arena match people been talking about um, for the past week or two that this show has been building up, building up. So what do we got tonight? Uh, what do we have tonight on AEW? Uh, well, number one, we kick it off with another Jake Roberts promo. Pretty much talking about Lance Archer again. Yes, he talked about Jake Roberts. Uh, not Jake Roberts, I mean Jake Roberts uh, talked about how Lance Archer said he was like a dog and that the TNT Championship was like a bone and every time Lance wins he becomes a little bit closer to what he wants and that, you know, he's watched Colt Cabana for years and he's got some stuff but it's not enough um, as Jake said Jake pretty much wanted to say that Lance Archer is angry because he was forced out of the United States to go to Japan to earn a living and he said that he should heed his words because if you don't, you will pay the price. Uh, but we do kick off the show. Uh, of course, we got Chris Jericho back on commentary again, which I say is the best part of this show. With Tony Schiavone, Jericho is just fun to listen to. I can't name all the jokes he said on here, but man, is he great on commentary. Um, they then went to a Cole Cabana video package where he said, you know, everybody needs to... Um, you know, everybody wants to talk about Lance Archer and everything, and that he thinks everybody, he's blowing every way, away everyone's uh, expectations right now. Because, yes, Lance Archer was dominant in Japan, but he talked about he's been uh, dominant in all these other countries from Japan to China to Israel to um, all over the world, basically. Colt Cabana has wrestled, and he's become, he's become better wrestling everywhere, and he's proved uh, his worth and everything for years. And he's beaten bad dudes uh, from before, uh, you know, bigger and badder than him. But I didn't realize uh, when he started, his goal in AEW is going to be the TNT Championship. But the opportunity has um, presented itself, and he's fully committed to it. Uh, of course, of course, both of these guys come out. For some reason, Lance Archer scares one of these guys in the crowd that they faint in. I see Billy Gunn, his son, and them are back out there on commentary again. Not commentary, but in the crowd again. Uh, but this was a good match, a uh, solid match between um, Archer and uh, Cabana. You know, one thing Jericho, I remember him saying that, you know, Cabana's got to leave the goofy stuff in the back. He knows he's a good wrestler, but needs to stop playing around and everything. But, um, <laughs> excuse me, um, both, like I said, both him and Archer um, had a really good match out there. Cabana... Tried to get him with the elbow and everything, but Archer ended up taking him down with the pounce, even though he tried to do those boom-boom punches. Uh, Lance Archer hit him with a choke slam, but he got him back up. He went to the corner, uh, but Cabana got out the way. He got in the second row, but Archer got him again. Hit him with the blackout for the win. Uh, so Archer continues to move on in the tournament. So like I said, solid match from both uh, Cabana and Archer. Pretty good out there, I will say that. Um, and I don't think anybody thought Cabana was going to win this match in general. But Archer was going to go over either way. Okay, but uh, Cabana had a good showing out there, I will say, for once in a while against uh, Lance Archer. They went to a video package with Britt Baker then talking about herself as a hero for the, um, what she did last week. That she's a role model. And that she's the true winner of that match after going against a Carl Sheeta last week. But because she used illegal, brutal tactics on her. That, you know, um, she she's going to find a way to take her out um, when she gets the chance. So, I guess she was had some needle. I think it was morphine and had plastic gloves on. Because, so, you know, she's a dentist. And this promo was cut from a dentist's office by the way so they gotta keep playing out she's a dentist she's a dentist folks uh they also went uh, they had predictions for who was gonna win this match tonight between moxley and hager as they had ariel hawani pretty much uh take um hager's side because of him being an mma and taz taking john moxley's side one thing i could say through about most of these uh prediction videos they had tonight and even taz kind of showing the technique of jake hager using that triangle hold he uses to how it takes out people, giving him an advantage to win that match. But if it's one thing I could take away from a lot of these video packages was, A, they had multiple people from MMA and Bellator on Hager's side of winning the match tonight in the inner circle. And multiple other wrestlers uh, were taking John Moxley's side of, you know, take, saying he was going to win the match tonight. So they're really trying to play more into Jake Hager's, um, you know, Bellator 
MMA background, especially bringing a lot of MMA guys from Bellator to put him over and everything. Uh, but next, though, Cassandra Golden came out as Britt Baker was going against her. Carl Sheeta was in the crowd. Baker was talking to her before she got in the ring. This match didn't really go on that long. Basically, a squash match. Um, I swear I've seen this Cassandra Golden girl before, though I don't remember where. But um, Baker ended up pretty much doing that thing with her teeth on the ropes and then stomping on the back of her head. Jericho, I thought it was funny. He says, oh my God, it's on the back of her head. It's on the back of her head then. Oh my God, it didn't want that. So Baker won the match. Um, who else they go to? Mike Goldberg and Ron Funches predicting tonight. Um, next we got, which I thought was the funniest thing out of the entire show, was, uh, the Bubbly Bunch, uh, was next. As they went to all the Inner Circle members as they were in their home, pretty much on FaceTime, kicking off with Santana, pretty much talking about the Young Bucks. What's up with the Young Bucks, man? You got Matt Carey and his brother Nick. How can you ever learn if he's gonna keep catch, you know, picking up the slack and everything? And, you know, Ortiz, for some reason, had, like, a... I think Kermit the Frog or was like a was sitting in his couch. I guess his kids or toys or whatnot. But Ortiz was there. Pretty much talking about, yeah, man, we got to get him, man. That's what we're going to do uh, and stuff. Because they were all talking to each other and talking about Matt Hardy then, which I thought they were supposed to be at Matt Hardy's house or something this week, but I guess that didn't happen. But, um, you know, they called Matt Hardy a loser. And um, Sammy Guevara was, you know, working out. Pretty much says, he called me a fake Latino, all right? Hey, man, I'm the Spanish God here, all right? What, what, what's going on with this guy? As he's punching the bag, Jake Hager pretty much was sitting at a pool. I think his kids were right by him. And he's going to choke John Moxley. And, you know, he's going to choke out the elite. And he's going to beat the shit. Well, he told his kids to put his, their hands around their ears. But he's going to beat the shit out of John Moxley and become the new AEW champion. They went to Jericho then, who looked like he was cooking uh, food and, um, you know, talked about... Hager being undefeated, and, uh, saying that Guevara, sorry, he looks sexy today for some reason, but, um, Jericho, pretty much, uh, he says, uh, what do you call an idiot who's been missing for weeks and likes horses? Hangman Page, he says, and, you know, he's cooking eggs or something, I believe, and he's poured orange juice, which he spilled on the table, by the way, because I think he missed, and I think he gave some of the food to his dogs, Several of the dogs right there when he released the hounds a couple weeks ago to new Mr. Burns right there. But he says, yes, man, you're going to win. You're going to win the title tonight. OK, you're going to bring the title back to the inner circle. And he says when he hung up and got his assistant on other lines, says like, did you find any toilet paper? I need the toilet paper. So obviously Jericho is ha- having a hard time uh, getting toilet paper from his house. But the bubbly brunch, the Brady Bunch, I thought that was the funniest thing throughout the night. That was funny. Jer- Jericho, Jericho is just great, man. But him in, in a circle, that was that was a fun thing to, to watch, okay? Uh, but next thing you know, uh, Pineapple Pete uh, was coming out, as Jericho called him, uh, Shug D. He went against Sammy Guevara. Um, you know, Jericho kept calling him the sex god. He got him in the AEW, which Jericho was saying he's got a lot of people in the AEW tonight. Him and Archer, when he was in New Japan at the time, uh, well... Still technically currently, and we don't look, want to look at it, but uh, this was a showcase match for Guevara to go against Shug D. He ended up winning with that reverse GTS or the Burning Hammer GTS he did for the win. Good match for Guevara, like I said, a showcase. I don't know where they're getting these guys to face these people, Shug D or Pineapple Pete, but he, he did okay out there. But Guevara got on the, on the mic after, pretty much talked about him being the first round of TNT match that he's going to win the title. And uh, he's going to beat the crap out of that face-painted idiot Darby Allen and take him down as he will become the new TNT champion. He went at, up to beat up Shug D then, saying that's what he's going to do to him. Darby Allen came out for the save to knock him back. So, like I said, good match from Guevara and a little good of a post-promo also with Guevara, with, um, not Guevara, but, um, with, I'm trying to hit that one, I keep saying Guevara, but, um, with, why, wow, I'm forgetting his name, with Allen coming out, I'm surprised I forgot that fast, but yeah, Darby Allen coming out though, um, so like I say, uh, good save from him, Kip Sabian came out, Penelope Ford, next to go against Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassie, the match mostly I did not like throughout this whole time, it was okay, but 
Like I said, the only thing I can say really good about this entire match was, once again, Jericho and Shivani being on commentary. Jericho is just great to listen to, even calling him uh, Chuck E. Cheese and that... Oh, man, he said Jimmy Jimmy Havoc lives in a box. That's I, that, that's probably accurate. And saying that Billy Gunn, his son, and Marco Stunt look like stairs. You could just walk up. That was pretty funny, too. But the match was okay. And, of course, Penelope Ford got involved at one point and, you know, ended up kissing Sabian. But um, Orange Cassidy kind of got involved then, but he got knocked down by Jimmy. I don't even know why Jimmy Havoc could even attacked Orange Cassidy. I don't even know what's going on with that. That didn't make a lot of sense, but... Um, Sabian pretty much went back to focus to uh, try to take down um, Chuck Taylor, uh, but the ref got distracted then. Um, Penelope Ford hit a big uh, Hurricane Rana onto Chuck Taylor, and Sabian won with the win. So, you, you know, the match was whatever, I should say. It was okay, but I forget Kip Sabian was in the tournament, so I can see why he went over to begin with. But like I said, a lot of just people getting involved. And I want to say the match dragged in a way, which I, I will say it was better than what they had some of these guys do last week, especially the best friends. Because, you know, I can go back and shit on whatever the fuck Omega and them. That was horrible last week, so I'm not going to get back into that stupid oil. Or, I can see why people turn the channel and let NXT win that one, because that was horrible last week. But um, it wasn't funny. But, you know, Chuck Taylor and... Yo, Sabian had a pretty okay match. wasn't really that bad. But I guess now they're doing Orange Cassidy and and um, Jimmy Havoc next week. I don't know how that's going to work. And I really don't want to see Jimmy Havoc in general. So uh, I don't understand how that match is going to go out well. Sean Spears went against Justin Law. Oh, just, hell, Spears never even took off his damn shirt. Uh... Spears won with the Seaboard Death Valley Driver. Um, I could have been on Dark. I don't know. This match was whatever. It's just just a showcase for Spears, even though he lost that match against Cody last week. But I don't really have much to say about that. Um, and then he went against this guy nobody knew about. This is something you could have put on Dark. But uh, I think they were done at that point, the end of the show. So Jericho and... Shivani were going to be gone from commentary as they went to the empty arena match, which was still at the, um, uh, what was it? The Daily's Place, which I'm sure was already recorded at one point, but it was at the Daily's, the Daily's Place Center in an empty arena match. Uh, you know, one thing I want to say before I say something about this match, about Double or Nothing, real quick, as news has been said, Double or Nothing has been moved. It'll be, of course, I guess, wherever location they're going to be with some empty arena or whatnot. Or building, since it's not going to be happening in Las Vegas, it's going to be happening on a Saturday on pay per view. I think it's allegedly still free, so I'm, I don't know how many people are going to pay money to watch a, you know, a, sh a pay per view without, um, without people in it. But uh, I don't know. Some some you could take away from this, okay? But um, we'll see what happens with Double or Nothing, because I have no idea how that's going to work, okay? But they still got to promote this pay-per-view. It's not going to be in Vegas. But like I said, it's going to be on Saturday, May the 23rd, I believe. I think it's on pay-per-view and on TNT. Is it on TNT? I'm not sure. But like I said, empty arena, pay-per-view. Um, hey, man, got to do what you got to do, man. People got to make money one way or another, okay? Don't agree with it, but come on, man. A lot of wrestling shows doing this. We just saw it with Mania. It's going to happen with Rebellion. And now it's going to happen with Double Nothing now. So, yeah. Pay-per-view, I guess on TV or however it works, but double or nothing is still happening. But like I said, we get to the Daily's Place in Jacksonville, Florida again between John Moxley and Jake Hager. Uh, Jim Ross was on commentary by himself, by the way, and wow did this go long. When I saw this match, and I think I've seen enough empty... <clears throat> Excuse me right there. Yeah, I've seen enough um, empty arena matches at this point, and you want to talk about another long empty arena match, this is, you know, when I was watching this match, all I could think of, this is like Edge and Orton all over again, or hell, it's almost like Gargano and Champa all over again. I've seen enough empty arena matches that have 
draw drawn out for a very long period of time and listen they've been playing up that whole MMA background style in this no holds barred empty arena match because I know they both had camel gear on and everything because it was a lot of submission holds throughout this match um a lot of reversals going to the outside then a lot of elbow strikes um Mox ended up trying to, like I said, trying to, you know, hit the ground game. Very technical submission holds they were trying to do out there. Especially playing in the Hager's, uh, you know, MMA background. And, of course, they went to the outside. They went to the security railing. Jim Ross had a point. Why do we got a security railing and there's nobody here? That's a great point. Why do we have guardrails for? Nobody's there. So they fought into the, um, you know outside of the barricade or they just weren't at ringside they fought i can't say crowd because it's not a crowd but you know hager ended up hitting a back body drop onto mox onto the concrete they fought through a lot of the steps then throwing each other into the you know the the chairs and whatnot even back into the steel railing a couple times uh a lot of punches chopping just a lot of brawling um all the way into another barricade then pushing it back um, what was it? I think I think Hager had the chair on Mox's um chest and didn't need the chair into him then, which he had a chair. Even once again, Jr. says, "Why do we got a chair if nobody's here?" Okay, I don't get that. But they got back into the ring. Hager hit a um swagger bomb, not swagger bomb, but the Hager bomb or the gut wrench or whatever you want to call it. Uh. On Mox, but you know, Mox ended up getting out of the way and uh, hit some running knee on him. Then both guys were on the ground um, after the two count. Uh, Mox pretty much had him in the corner, pretty much with several clotheslines. Then and uh, got his own clotheslines on him. Pretty much um, tried to get um, Hager into like a what was it a power driving in after that, but Hager got for the ankle lock. Then Mox tried to roll him up. That didn't work. Tried to go for a DDT. Still did not work. Um, I think Jake ended up hitting, getting him with that triangle hold thing. But Mox was able to get to the ropes and get his way out there punching him. Um, like I said, he got another chair in. And like I said, JR, like, like I said, JR says, why is there a chair when nobody's here, huh? Makes no sense. And, you know, Hager's pretty much taking out Mox several times, get him into the ankle lock, I have to punch him in the corner several times, and Mox is like, come on, but once he got an ankle lock, he was like, I was like he says, uh, break my ankle, motherfucker, says something like that, but Mox was able to counter out of it, and got him, you know, into his own submission hold then, after he tried to go for the Death Rider, but he got with a guillotine, Hager got out of there, he was about to charge into Mox, but Mox ended up taking the chair, which, by the way, when he ran into him, I think he hit Mox, Moxley in the nuts or something. But Mox got the chair in, threw it at Hager, at his head, and then hit him with a Death Rider for the win, winning the match. This match went 30-something minutes, okay? It went 30 minutes. Mox was just getting up, barely, you know, still on the champ. He'll defend this belt anywhere. I don't care how tough you are. He is the AEW World Champion. This means a lot to professional wrestling. I'll take him in the back, anyone in the back of a Waffle House. 50,000 fans, 0 fans, 10 fans, bring it on. We're the hottest promotion in the world, and we're on the top. And he said he needed a drink after this. So, yeah. Uh, once again, this is, uh, and I know this was taped also, so I guess they thought this was the best thing they could play on TV since this was taped. But this match went through four commercial breaks and went over 30 minutes, or at the 30, or a little past the 30 minute mark. And I'm not going to lie. It did drag on a couple times. Like I said, lots of mission hole, a lot of brawling. It wasn't bad, and I know it was an empty re arena match, but it did, like I said, it got to make this like a legit fight at the same time. Two guys beating the crap out of each other, and they played it and hyped it up very well from the video packages to the training to the predictions, even kind of, you know, okay, what's this person going to do? His technique is like that. Try to make a very sports-based uh, feel to it of how you can counter who and to what and of whatever move you got out of this. So they did their best to play it up, but the match went on too long, Okay. 30 minutes just went on too long. But yeah, a lot of brawling, a lot of grunting, a lot of kicks. 
A lot of this very slow and methodical, but I feel like I've seen enough empty arena, you know, last man standing, no holds barred, whatever, however you do these matches, okay? It, it, can, it, it can drag on after a while. It's not bad at first, but when you go through like three, four commercial breaks and go over 20 minutes and go on to 30-something minutes, and it's like, man, because they, they start like, what, 820-something at the time? And... They just went on for a long time. And I said, once I knew this match would start at this time, I like, yeah, it's going to be a while. This is going to go past 30 minutes one way or another. They hyped it up really well, but I'm not going to sit and tell you that this was a great match or anything. Like I said, this was like a no-holds bar. Like I said, a lot of them try to use more weapons, but you know, they go from in the ring, and then they go to the outside of the ring, and they brawl all around, and then they find their way back. And, you know, JR tried to do what he could to keep this entertaining on commentary as much as he could, but I knew he wasn't going to do that great out there on his own and everything. I'm surprised they even let JR do it by himself. But, like I said, this was taped in the Jacksonville's Daily's Place because I don't think they could even use that location anymore in Florida because, you know, well, they probably can now since wrestling is apparently an essential business nowadays. So... Uh, maybe any wrestling company can play anything in Florida right now, but <clears throat> like I said, this was taped a while ago, so there's many things you could say from this, okay, but in a way, it just went on too long, but I figured Mox was going to win in general. Like I said, a lot of matches tonight, just it like yeah, these random job guys go against a lot of people. Some was to hype the tournament and everything, but... Um, I don't know if it left me really wanting to see some of these things, like what Sabian and um, what Dustin Rose the next week or two. I know we didn't see some people tonight. We didn't see the Exalted. We didn't, we didn't see Vince Brody Lee McMahon. Let's see how they make fun of that next week. I'm sure they'll have something about him firing and releasing people next week. Let's see how that goes. Uh, like who else wasn't on this show? I don't think any of the Elite was on here tonight. No Cody. None from the Bucks. Nothing from um, Omega. Maybe something serious. Just don't do that stuff like you did last week. Uh, no Matt Hardy. Um, there's a lot of things you didn't really see. Like I said, Archer and Cabana had a pretty good match. But, I don't know. Some, some of the stuff was, I don't know. Like a lot of random matches they had against so just some people. I don't know. They don't even work in the company. Some good showcases and whatnot. But, once again, one of the best things on here is Chris Jericho and his commentary again. Which I get a kick out of. And that's fun to listen to. Because it's Jericho. But, um, yeah. Like I said, the big thing tonight was the No Holds Barred match. And I just felt like it went a little too long once it went past 30 minutes. Okay? But, other than that, though, that's my review of AEW Dynamite tonight. Uh, like I said, I guess we now build into... Double or nothing, so we'll see where that goes. But yeah, that's the show tonight, and uh, we'll see what happens next week. So I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe, tell me what you think about AEW Dynamite tonight. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Hooded Night 890, and tell me what you think of this show or anything else that is going on right now. Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be saying, How many people is AEW going to sign after what happened today? And I've seen a lot of comments from that. But yeah, I'm out. I'll see you guys later. Peace.